Boa tarde. Ah, gente, vocês podem fazer melhor que isso. Boa tarde. Agora sim. Eu quero agradecer a, a, a todos vocês essa oportunidade de estar aqui. Uh, eu tinha me preparado... Eu, falamos inglês ou português? Inglês ou português? O que, que vocês preferem? Inglês ou português? All right. Ok. All right. So, uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much. This is my first time in Portugal, my first time in Porto. Thank you. Uh, all uh, Idea Teca for this opportunity, and I feel like I'd like to know you better, so I prepared a little dynamic um, aerobic, and I would like to do it now. I'm going to count to three, and then you all look that way, okay? It's not complicated, all you have to do is this. Any questions? Okay, one, two, three. Thank you. This way I could have a profile of the audience. <laughs> That's how us clowns do assessment. <laughs> so that's the technology part, clown technology. Um, well, it is about technology and, you know, clowning. When I was invited to this, I went to the TED website and I looked up clowns and I got, your query resulted in zero results. You know how that makes me feel? <laughs> like a virgin. <laughs> Yeah, so I want to make this official. Ted, clowned for the very first time today. <laughs> All right, okay, so now I'm gonna get to work. You know, you might be thinking, what's a clown doing here? I have no idea. My job as a clown, I found out, uh, is not about bringing answers, but playing with questions. And so I'm going to start telling you, uh, you know, the story that led me to this. Because, uh, as Manuel said, and I was born in Brazil, and in 1983, I moved to New York City to study musical theater, because I wanted to become a superstar on Broadway. I've always had small ambitions. <laughs> so... Once a superstar on Broadway, I'd go move on to Hollywood and then start small with an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor and then a Best Actor Award two years later. As you can see, it was all figured out, except that on my path to glory, I realized I wasn't having fun. And I thought, what's wrong? If I'm not having fun, something's wrong. What's wrong? Another question. And the phone rang, and it was my friend Lane, and she said, I want to invite you to audition for the best job in the whole world. I said, what is it? Thinking Broadway, Hollywood. And she said, clowning in a hospital. <laughs> Are you there? Uh, yeah, yeah, darling, I am. But uh, um, clowning in a hospital? Uh, I think it's ludicrous. And she said, I thought you were open-minded. I thought you were going to see it first and judge later. I said, okay, I'm sorry, let's go see it. And when I got there and I saw the two clowns dressed up like doctors, that was already contrasting. But when I saw the patient, the girl they were gonna visit, in a state of prostration, I thought, oh my God, this is going to be so embarrassing, nothing can get a reaction. But to my surprise, those two clowns stopped at the door and looked at the girl. And from prostration, she went to eye contact. They introduced themselves, and all of a sudden, she latched eyes and started to show tonus and sat up on her bed. As she allowed them to come in, and they started displaying their skills, elegantly blended in medical procedures, she jumped out of bed and started to play like a regular child. I have never seen in my life a Broadway superproduction or a Hollywood superproduction have that kind of impact on an audience of one. And I had never seen the power of that audience of one on a cast of two. And to me, all I could think was, this is all new, this is the future, and I have to do this. So the encounters between clowns and children in the hospital took me on a journey that brought me here today. And this is what I would like to share with you. Doutores da Alegria, or Doctors of Joy. Um, 
Yeah, a friend of mine said it sounds like porn in uh, English. <laughs> so I use both languages, you know. But anyway, okay, wrong button. Oh, okay, so how does, uh, you know, how does joy, how do we understand joy? Because laughter, we just, uh, uh, this beautiful uh, uh, presentation by Newton, we we're talking about uh, laughing a lot. But joy, uh, Laughing is one way of expressing joy, but actually joy starts over here. In this graphic, it starts here, at the convergence of the two looks. You see, clown and child, we're both looking at the same place. And basically, what we want to do is arrive there and stop and be available. No judgment, no nothing. And that's many times... When the child surprises you with a present, may I come in? Well, if the crocodile under my bed allows you to come in, <laughs> oh, that's okay, I'm not afraid of crocodiles. And as you go in, the crocodile awakens, <laughs> and off we go, and that's when the laughter begins. Or sometimes, may I come in? No, go away. All right, I'll come back later. But for clowns and children, not, no, not everything you hear is necessarily what you hear. Not everything you see is necessarily what you see. Everything is a present. Okay, I understand. I am not walking into your room. Is it clear that I'm not walking into your room? I just wanted to make sure I, you know, passed on the message. Is it okay? Okay, good. Are you sure that you understand that I'm not even coming near you? Oh, great. I'm so happy. Thank you so much. You see, so it's about making yourself available, getting out of your comfort zone to make somebody else feel good. We aim at results, and this is the result we aim for, the experience of joy. When a child feels this, then she takes charge, she takes control of her life from patient to agent. And it's so powerful that it touches everyone around. And research has shown that healthcare professionals, by seeing a healthful interaction, they rethink their practice. And they say, how can I have that quality of relationship with my patients? You see, nothing was done. And in this graphic, how do we see ourselves in the hospital? As you see, extremity A is connected to extremity B uh, and by a silly central vector that unites A not with the profession, not with the occupation, but with a human being inhabiting that profession by that ability, the ability to laugh, to have fun, to enjoy. How does a clown walk into a hospital? Well, first of all, because the door is open. But <laughs> you see, clowns are stupid, but they are smart. So. Because a clown, he looks at the world and relates to it from a child's standpoint. It's not a childish adult, that's pathetic. But it's, yeah, it's about the no judgment thing, just being available. You know, you might think, oh, that's far away from me. But picture yourself in front of a baby, especially if you have a, an emotional connection to that baby, and see what happens to you. <laughs> know what I'm talking about? So, the clown stops at the hospital door and he sees that the big guy, the guy in charge, is dressed in white. So the clown dresses in white. Of course, he remembers to unbutton first. <laughs> okay. So he dresses in white. And then he realizes that the guy in charge, the doctor, wears a surgical cap. So he goes to his universe and looks for something equivalent. But then he says, ah, he also wears a surgical mask. So he goes to his universe and finds something equivalent. <laughs> the smallest mask in the world. <laughs> hides a nose to reveal a human being. 
And once he starts, can you hear me? Can you hear, can you hear me? I'm so glad I asked because I didn't get a response from you. Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry. I have to take care of this. Hello. Um, can you hear me from here? Yes. Good, because I was not talking. <laughs> Do you mind if I check your uh, hearing organ? The hearing one. Okay. This is not going to hurt. No, I have great news for you. When I look here, I can't see her head. <laughs> which means you should take a look at the stuff you carry in your head every once in a while. I don't know, are you aware of what you do, of what you're carrying in there? Really? Because like I have to, uh, man, the thing is long. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you, uh, oh my God. <laughs> and if, oh my heavens. <laughs> oh God, this is endless. And there's so much more in there. Don't you think it's kind of nice the way it looks? Don't you like it? You know, I like it too. Look at that. If, if you don't mind, can you show everyone what you look? Look at this hair. Look at him. Tá com outra cara. This applause is for you, dear. See what happens when you put out your best. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. You helped me a lot. Because, ah. This is exactly what we do. It's about going beyond diagnosis, equipment, machinery, and finding what's good, bringing it out, and sharing it with everyone. And once you live that, you can't look at life in the same way. So, now, I'd like to share with you our vision for the future. And I learned all of this from the kids I met in these 18 years. So I'd like to share with you a scene in the ICU of a hospital by a master. Uh, Our Lady of DVD, please, with your blessings. <laughs> Thank you. 